When we were putting together this exhibition, I think the inspirational nature of Michael Van Dessel's life came very much to the fore. He spoke, or people spoke, not so much in the words, but it was the reverence, the hushed tones, Michael Van Dessel. There was a hint in the back of the, the eye. You could see the wheels just turning. People were going to very happy memories. And I think that's a beautiful legacy for anybody to have. And I think really it's that what we are trying to celebrate over the course of the next number of months through this exhibition. So I just mainly I'm just standing up here to say thank you to a number of people and maybe also just tell a little story. Uh, all, uh, there's no point in me going over all the th things that you find to read yourselves in the exhibition about my father. But uh, when he was um, a young lad of about 15 years, I think, in 1914, his uh, parents gave him a bicycle because he had done uh, well at school. So he had the bicycle for a few months and then suddenly the half of Belgium were fleeing, leaving their homes and racing off because the Germans were coming. It was August 1914. So they, they piled everything that they could of their belongings onto a cart and himself and his siblings, and there were, there were, there were eight children so, and, and the, the parents. So they, they set off on foot to go to Holland because Holland was, was neutral in the First World War. And uh, I mean, most of, the, of their neighbors in the village were on the road as well. I've seen pictures there in uh, the world at World War I, I think, on, on the History Channel recently, and I saw all these throngs of people fleeing uh, and, and the army coming in the opposite direction. And I said, gosh, I wonder would there be a shot of the, of the Van Dessels heading for the, for the Dutch border. <coughs> anyway, they were allowed to sleep in a church in a place called Uden, and apparently there was just one condition. They had to be up at six o'clock in the morning and, to, and clear off out of the church so that mass <coughs> could go ahead. But they were there for about three or four months, I'm sorry, by the way, I forgot to say that my, my father uh, decided that a safe place for his bicycle would be in the tower of the church, which was just across the road from where they lived. <clears throat> so he, um, when, he, when they came back, they found their house was blown to bits, the church was wrecked, and there was no sign of the bicycle. <laughs> 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 so that was his, exp uh, his, his experience of war. Uh, and. Um, he didn't talk much about it, but he did tell me that story a long, long time ago. Reverend Father, ladies and gentlemen, I read this because 50 years to be discussed within three minutes would be very difficult. So by writing down all the main points I have to say, it's much easier that way not to leave out anything important. Uh, first of all, it's an honor to give uh, this short introduction Indeed, it was a privilege to have Michael van Dessel as my best friend. Apart from our mother tongue, which was Flemish, which you often call Dutch, which should be called Nederlands, the lowlands, we had so many other things in common. We both chose to make a career in this beautiful country. Um, we also had two great loves in our lives our family, and our music. Not like the Muslims, they have two wives. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> Where we differ is the reason why we left our little Belgium. Many people don't realize little Belgium is about the size of Northern Ireland, with 10 million people squeezed together, running in each other's way. <laughs> Michael came here in the early 20s, after the First World War, when Belgium was completely ruined. Even the churches could not afford a professional organist. However, even when times were difficult in Ireland, the people were always exceptionally generous for their priests, for their church. And consequently, the church was able to pay for a professional organist. In the 20s, 
the biggest and the best organ in all Ireland was to be found here in Dundalk, in St. Patrick's, built by an international firm, Willis, often nicknamed Father Willis, because he was the founder of the, the organ builders firm. We have today a Dundalk man who still plays that organ. Um, for that reason, the clergy wanted to employ the best organist they could find. And that musician was naturally Michael van Dessel, all the way from Flanders in Belgium. He became the most famous, the most popular church musician in Ireland, not only for these many solo recitals, but also for the many beautiful pieces he wrote for his own choir. All local talent, by the way. If this town were in Northern Ireland, it would be probably called City of Culture. There's so many beautiful things here. The third thing Michael and I had in common was that this green era brought us nothing but good luck. We both found a wonderful bride in this country and spent our life doing what we loved most, playing a big pipe organ. Michael was a born optimist who shared his joie de vivre with his wonderful wife, Cecilia. She was his discreet guardian angel who kept him happy and healthy. If his passion was music, hers was playing golf. I know very little about that noble game, but I was, I was told that she was quite good at it. <clears throat> Few people knew that Michael was also a distinguished linguist. When the world famous Belgian organist Flo Peters asked him to translate his three massive volumes written for students, to translate them from Netherlands, from Flemish into English, Michael did not hesitate to accept this difficult task, full of technical words, very hard to translate. So to conclude this little word, I invite everybody to spend a little time to examine this remarkable memorabilia, which will remind us of this very talented Flemish musician who became an Irishman by adoption. Thank you for your presence. I also want to thank Mr. Brian Walsh, especially, and his helpers who took this generous initiative to organize this exhibition. And it is with great pleasure that I declare this exhibition open.